The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Trader's Edge with Steve Rhodes. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-445-1044. The Trader's Edge. Now, Steve Rhodes. Good afternoon from TFNN. Welcome to the April 7th. Fantastic Friday edition of today's Trader's Edge show. I'm your host, Stevie Perseverance Rhodes who absolutely knows that each of us should always be pioneers of our future versus prisoners of our past. Hope everyone out there is having a great day. Let's make sure we have an extraordinary one. And of course, the easiest way to do that, it's to always remember that life happens for us, not to us. That's right. When you and I make that one little two by four shift, it means we can find the gift in every set of circumstance that life is going to toss at us. Today, you and I, we get to go check out the circumstance of these markets. We're going to go figure out what the bulls and bears, what the buyers and the sellers are communicating to you and I just past 1 o'clock in the afternoon. I want you to know that I'm absolutely grateful for your presence here, and more importantly, I'm here to serve you. <laughs> Excuse me. I am here to serve you. That uh, scratchy throat is back. But uh, look, and the easiest way to serve you? is to give me a call, 877-927-6648. Of course, uh, you can always send me an email, steve at tfnn.com. And inside the Tiger's Den, any ping will do. So let's go ahead and get this show started on Fantastic Friday. Of course, this is Tiger Financial News Network. I'm Steve Rhodes. Welcome to the show Right now, the Dow trade up 16 points at 20,679. S&P trade out at 2358. That's up a point. NDX 100 up four at 5424. NASDAQ is up four points. Russell 2000 up one. The semiconductor is up six. The New York Stock Exchange up five. The Wilshire 5000 up 18. It's only the trannies that are to the downside as we speak at 108 in the afternoon. Off 16 bucks trading out at 9118. Silver is up seven bucks. I'm sorry. Yeah, seven bucks. Boy, that would be one heck of a move, would it not? Gold is up seven bucks, but silver is down. Uh, we'll call it flat. Light sweet crude is up 48 cents, trading at 52.18. So we'll check out these markets. Of course, this is the end of the week. And you want to know what kind of week it has been? Well, just let's go take a look at the Dow just to give an example. We're trading at 26.80, 26.79. That's where we began. <laughs> Excuse me again. That is where we began the week. We got basically a nice little doji candle that is forming right now inside of the Dow. This is a weekly chart, by the way, that we're looking at. So you can see where the resistance is just a couple weeks ago where that bearish engulfing candle formed. No real other signal of a top inside of the Dow. However, it is traveling with inside the cone of silence. If we take a look at that cone of silence, you can see that little descending trend line. If you're watching our charts out here to uh, you're seeing both a descending trend line and a rising trend line the house of the rising sun which acted as support this morning so you can't bust them down what's the Dow gonna do it's gonna go try to bust them up where's bust them up take it to well it's gonna take it to the descending trend line or somewhere near there and if we take a look at uh, that trend line you can go ahead and form that that starts at the highs from that March 1st swing point your next touch points inside the dow i would use that big downdraft day from march 21st along the bottom it's connect the dots it doesn't get easier than this is three exact lows out here this morning's low the one from the trading day of april 3rd and the one from march 27th you say what does this mean steve-o well it could mean that we are going to trade within this little cone of silence for a few more days out here it does mean that whichever way we break that the measured move then becomes equal to equal to or greater than in essence what would we call this is this the apex right here the beginning of the uh, triangle so that really becomes where price travels to um, or should travel to once we see a break of this little cone of silence now there's a couple other indices where you could do the same type of uh, use the same set of tools like the s p 500 now on a weekly basis for the s p 500 let's go see if it too has formed the old doji out there 
or close to it. Uh, we take a no <coughs> small bodied candle, but uh, you know as you can see, we're pretty much trading just slightly underneath where the open was on Monday. I don't know where it's going to close out today, but in the S and P 500 that was the weekly chart. Now we'll just go put the uh, daily chart. Oh, daily chart is on my screen. We just have to open it up. That looks so much like the Dow, does it not? But it's not. But it's very similar. It, too, in the cone of silence. Ah, you know, do we anticipate that anything's going to really bust loose over the course of the next three hours? Probably not. There's been plenty of opportunities to bust things out to one side or the other. And it just simply hasn't happened. That's got to make you say, hmm, something to think about. If we go take a look at the equity futures contracts, yeah, let's go do that. What we're going to see here, not a lot of upside potential. Uh, we take a look at the ES mini trading right into PS daily resistance. That's at the price level of 2356.50 is the uh, number out there. You're trading right now 2355.75. So just three ticks <coughs> to get up to that resistance level. Now, if price can clear that area, close above it, well, then price will travel in the S&P 500 up to that cone of silence, that descending trend line. If you take a look at the S&P 500. <coughs> And you want to go ahead and utilize these uh, profiles. Boy, they're a beautiful thing, right? They are a beautiful thing. Take a look at last night's low. Last night's low, the exact price, is uh, 23.56. Right. I'm sorry, 23.36.75. What was I looking at? Uh, I'll give you the right data right now. 23.36.75. By the way, the uh, bottom of the uh, box for the weekly is 23.36. It says 85, but that's an impossibility. It's really, you just convert that to 0.75 out there. I mean, you want to talk about hitting it right to the tick. Well, that's what the ES Mini did. You talk about not being able to bust it out to the downside. That's the message coming from the ES Mini. The Dow, which had moved below the bottom of its profile, but we know that profile. We're looking at lower left. We'll just go ahead and blow that up on the screen for you out here. That couldn't bust out its lows either. So where is it likely to trade to? Yeah, the uh, message would be about 20,660. That's another 30 points higher than where we're trading right now. That's been the wall of worry. That has been, from a candle close standpoint, that has uh, been a significant resistance over the course of the last couple of weeks out here. No reason for it to not act as resistance as we speak today. Inside the NQ, that's the upper right. We'll go ahead and blow that up on our screen for you. You can see that trading right into the bottom of its daily profile level, that bottom being 53.31. <coughs> Yeah, we'll just call it 5331. We're trading right now at 5427. If price is able to close above that inside the NQ, well, <clears throat> then we're looking at 5441 to 5455 out there for its move. Inside of the Russell 2000, don't forget, a little 10 minute delay out here, but that's not that big of a deal. That uh, just simply is uh, struggling. It would be giving you an important message if it could close above both its daily and weekly bottom of its box. And those numbers being 1367.80 and 1368.82. I'll go take a big swig of liquid. I'm not telling you which kind. We'll see if we can get rid of this little hacking cough up there. Steve Roach with TFN. We'll be right back. I'm Steve Rhodes, host of The Trader's Edge, heard daily at TFNN.com and author of Mastering Probability, a daily investment and trading newsletter service that I send out each morning by 8 a.m. My morning newsletter service covers exactly what the markets have been doing since last night's close, providing you with an edge on your trading day ahead. You get actionable trading ideas, including the exact entry, stop, and profit targets. Plus, I'll teach you the patterns and hidden market correlations that will make you a better trader. As a subscriber, you'll gain access to my 90-minute money management workshop, where I'll teach you the secrets that'll save your assets. The bottom line, I've got your back, including a 30-day money-back guarantee. See for yourself the type of analysis I provide each trading day by signing up for Mastering Probability today. With nothing to lose, this is an offer you should not pass on. Mastering Probability can be found under trading newsletters on the front page of TFNN.com.
TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting tfnn.com. The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN. Dot com now. Steve, take your phone calls now. now. Toll free at 1 877 927 6648. Internationally at 727 445 1044. Welcome back, folks. Dow's up 27. S&P's up two. Sean writes in and says, "How is gold looking?" Sean uh, went ahead and is in the dust at 27 dollars. So nice trade there. You've got dust trading at 28.19. So let's go take a look at uh, gold. Of course, really the starting point, Sean, for us to help answer that question, I believe, is uh, let's go take a look at the Japanese yen. So Japanese yen, as we speak right now, you talk about something else that held a bottom yesterday. And what is more important, when I say yesterday, I'm referring to the uh, the military action taken by the uh, president of the United States out here. And the level of support, this is where the whole metals thing, I wrote about this inside the newsletter briefly this morning so that uh, everybody would... Uh, be able to to not pay so much attention to the big spike up we were seeing in gold because the question was well is that move real and this currency pair was saying not a chance no way steve -o. okay no way why because all price did remember we took a look at the uh, es mini how price got right down to the bottom of its weekly profile in the case of the uh, japanese yen u.s dollar <coughs> currency pair the actual low this morning was, uh, or last night, was 110.13. 110.13 was the actual low. And the uh, bottom of the uh, box, 110.39, really. And at 110.39, you got to love it. So it is a, just simply a significant level of support. Uh, so with regard to how does your trade look, first, this currency pair is suggesting that it could actually travel up to the 111.67 area. Now, this has a 15-minute delay. So if those of you that got the live version uh, of the currency pair, it's going to be slightly different than the price I'm giving you at exactly right now at 120. But what we do know is in order for gold and silver to take off to the moon out here, this currency pair just simply has to fail. And what we know is that just simply support has held. So now let's go back and let's go take a look at uh, Goldilocks. Straight out at 1260, it's up seven bucks. We're seeing it give up its gains out here. We're going to see that it's uh, back down below its weekly profile level, 1260.30. Uh, there's nothing unusual about that. In fact, if anything, if you want to take a look at what gold has done, it's really tested the downdraft, right? The downdraft area right here from 1111. That sounds like the crap staple out here. Well, 
Now they gold crapped out. And it crapped out uh, just simply with regard to the breakout because of the currency pair. You and I have looked to this ad nauseum, whatever that means out there, but we've done that. And so we know the relationship there. Now, what does that mean, Sean, with regard to you say, how does gold look? I tell you what I would do. Uh, you've got a nice profit in your dust trade. I would just close it out by the end of the day out here because gold probably doesn't have a ton of movement to the downside. Of course, dust is really take a look at the mining equities out there. So that's like a whole different animal. But you asked about gold and how does gold look? And it sounds like you're utilizing this as your barometer to uh, what you uh, what you ought to do. And I'd say at this stage here, we've talked about this sideways action. Now, that says, hey, let's go pull up the GDX. So we'll go pull up the GDX out here. And we're going to see, you know, on a closing level, we continue to be back inside this little box out there. That box being from 2256 to 2361. We're at 2343. So, Sean, you've got a decision. It's. I'm not saying that uh, that the GDX won't get down and test 2256 again. It, it very well may. Um, what you'd really want to see, though, is you'd really want to see the yen currency pair breaking above a level of resistance out here and at this stage of the game as of 122 we don't have any indication any indication that that's what it's doing we'll wait for the weekly to pop up on our screen here and so 11167 could be the end of it with regard to the, its bounce out here and therefore you know that could happen sunday evening early Monday morning, and uh, you might not be able to take advantage of that with regard to the dust trade. But I will say, hey, congrats there. Now, if I just take a look at dust for you, provide you with some other numbers out here, the problem is I don't necessarily put a lot of weight, a lot of stock. Not that it's bad, but uh, a tremendous amount of stock inside the ETS with regard to these market profiles. But the bottom line is, and I'm not saying they're not worth their weight in gold. They're just not worth their weight in the real gold out here. But if you take a look at the bottom of that box out here, 2642, you got down to 2640, held the support out here. So maybe this uh, dust trade will get you up into the 31-ish uh, uh, type area out here so I, all i can say is nice trade and uh nice uh, call out there and sean is a newsletter subscriber so he knows how i felt about what the move inside of gold was with regard to the currency pair is it just simply not being the real deal that's the same thing going on with regard to the bonds out here because they're all kind of connected at the hip and so in the case of the 30-year, uh, you know, it looked like, hey, it maybe wanted to break out above the resistance of the top of this consolidation in the 152-ish type area. But uh, not to be, not to be because it does not have its uh, help from all of its friends out there. So, Sean, best of luck on that trade out there. And please let me know if there's anything else I can do to assist you. I'm going to take a quick peek here, see if there's any other email requests out there. It looks like we, oh, right, let me see, let me see what's coming in. What's coming in out here? Nope, just somebody asking about, uh, about uh, phone lenses. I don't have any idea why I'm getting an email about phone lenses out here. Now, what do we want? Oh, let's go take a look at oil. Light Sweet Crude, Texas T out here. Now, Light Sweet Crude, different story. Trade out of 52.16. 52.16 does what to us? It says, hey, Light Sweet Crude is really kind of broken out, but it sort of has maybe hit its plateau. Maybe it's going to get up here and test the downdraft area. The actual downdraft would be about 53.43. Um, but it doesn't look like it's ready to just bust out at the seams out here. Uh, there's nothing bearish, but it is running into a bit of a wall of resistance in the 53 area. So the move, <coughs> excuse me, the move out here in Light Sweet Crew, that may kind of be done versus overdone out here. Okay, what else do we want to uh, partake in as we look at these uh, charts? And let's go look at some of these uh, stocks that are moving in the market. We haven't really done that here for a while. Let's go take a look at Domino's Pizza. I'm sure each of us out there have called the uh, number for Domino's Pizza in our lifetime out here and uh, said, hey, why did we actually do that? But in this case here, the question of why is it doing what it's doing, I actually don't know what the news is behind it, but I can tell you it's not good news what is behind it. 
I don't see it. Just says it's fallen on heavy volume. Hey, no kidding. Take a look at the volume out here. 1.6 million shares today. And uh, so this is not a good scene for uh, Domino's. Where is this thing headed to? Well, with volume, it's busted through those horizontal levels of support out there, those being the daily and the weekly profiles. So that's not a good scene. Looks to me then where Domino's is headed to is the breakout area. That breakout being the uh, trading session of October 18th that had 3.5 million shares. The problem is that um, that's $153 Roonies versus the 178 pepperonis that it's trading at as we speak right now. So doesn't look good for DPZ Domino's Pizza. When we get back from this break for Danny in Atlanta, we'll go take a look at silver. But in the meantime, Danny, I'll go ahead and post for you the market profiles for the 60, the 240, the daily, and the weekly time frames. Keep those with you in We'll be right back. In quiet markets, investors search for new trading opportunities. We'd like to introduce you to a new product that provides opportunities even in flat markets. Nadex, the North American Derivatives Exchange, is a new and innovative Chicago-based exchange registered with the Commodity Futures Trading Commission. And unlike most other exchanges, Nadex allows you to trade directly through them with direct market access when using their trading platform. Nadex never charges a fee to use their platform, which even includes real-time charts and full customization capability. Nadex's unique short-term binary options allow traders and investors to capitalize on strategies even when the underlying markets are quiet. Nadex's innovation has allowed them to come up with a line of unique trading products that are unavailable anywhere else. See how it works at Nadex.com. That's N-A-D-E-X.com or click on the Nadex banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Futures and options trading involves risk and may not be appropriate for all investors. Many of our new listeners have heard about the Tiger's Den, but wondered, what exactly is it? The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information, and a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of your favorite TFNN shows, plus see all the charts as they happen live during those shows and have access to all those charts. You can test drive the Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days. It will greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets. Details on the Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. Platinum, grains, crude oil, gold, copper, cattle, hogs, gasoline, natural gas, coffee, cotton, cocoa, and sugar. These are just some of the commodities mentioned in the most recent issue of Andy Hecht's Techno Mental Commodity Report. Andy publishes his weekly newsletter every Thursday morning, where he breaks down the commodity market and provides his subscribers with specific trading recommendations based on his trading methodology. By signing up for a free trial to the Technomental Commodity Report, you'll get a full 30 days to try out this powerful newsletter service and see for yourself the types of trades Andy has recommended for his subscribers. When you sign up for a 30-day free trial, you're under no obligation to pay anything. And should you decide to continue, you will lock in the low rate of only $79 a month. Sign up right now for the Technomental Commodity Report and make sure you're ready to catch the next big trade in commodities. For more information and to get started today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. Tiger TV is an exciting way to experience TFNN programming, see high-definition video, giving you crystal clear charts, as well as seeing some of the faces of TFNN's highly acclaimed financial experts with crisp, full-fidelity sound. Catch Tom O'Brien, John Logan, Steve Rhodes, Basil Chapman, Larry Pesavento, Think or Swim, David White, Andy Hecht, and Daryl Martin in crystal clear, high-definition audio and video tiger tv exclusively at tfnn.com this segment is brought to you by think or swim for more information just click the think or swim banner on the front page of tfnn.com <laughs> Welcome back up uh, folks so uh Danny in Atlanta we, I went ahead <coughs> excuse me 
posted for you the multiple time frames out there with regard to some market profiles. You can see that during the last five minutes here, we could probably cut it back to a minute, but during the last five minutes, you can see the big volume, the flush out of uh, silver. There were, what, 8,600 contracts, uh, 8,519 contracts during that uh, five-minute bar. We're into a brand new one right now. The question is, is that uh, who's buying? Who's buying that uh, flush out there? Um, you know, so uh, if, if we take a look at profiles and we switch back to a daily time frame out here, this is where we probably get an important uh, signal with regard to silver. Let's go ahead and turn the uh, daily back on. Is that it? That's it. Um, watch to see if silver breaks below the um, level, its daily profile level. See if this holds its support. 1797 is the number. Let me put the weekly out here. The weekly doesn't really impact it. So watch the uh, 18, uh, I'm sorry, 1797 level out there. If that's hold, it was professionals that were actually in there buying silver. Uh, that would be my read on it, uh, Danny in Atlanta. Is there anything else that you need? If so, just go ahead and let me uh, let me know there. Okay, uh, let's come back and uh, take a look. Let's continue. Well, let me check. Let me check out the old uh, bat phone, the email system out here, uh, the one where it gets to me a little bit quicker on my uh, cell phone, and see if there's anything out here. And uh, there we go. It's up. And it's updated, and the answer is uh, no. Okay, good. So, what are you guys doing this weekend? Any of the big parties or anything going on? Um, and uh, hey, hey, it's Masters weekend. Does it get any better than that for a uh, golfer? And uh, unfortunately, look like Charlie Hoffman is kind of uh, thrown up a bit around holes, what, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven? I haven't watched it here for a little while, but. Mm, he what a heck of a round the guy shot yesterday. Kind of how kind of hard to follow up a a seven under round out there. Okay, uh, let's go again. Let's go take a look at some equities out here that are moving and uh, grooving. We looked at things going to the downside. How about Google? It's up three tenths of a percent. Is it even worth looking at out here? I don't know. We're going to go do it anyway. So as we take a look at uh, what is uh, Google doing, what is it not doing? Pulling back, testing its swing point from March 27th that had 1.9 million shares, and it's testing it and rejecting it on lighter volume. A total rejection today is going to be a close of about 841.38. You're at 849.36. So it's tested that level. What does that say? Hey, can't uh, bust down that uh, swing point to the downside. Might as well go to the upside. Might as well go take a look at some of the other equities out here, right? Let's go take a look. And we haven't looked at Facebook in Lord knows how long. And if I try to marry Facebook with Google, I get FB Goog. But that's not going to uh, go ahead and post a chart on the system. So uh, if we take a look, what is Facebook uh, doing out here? Um, not much. Now, its swing point, which it hasn't gotten back to, is March 22nd, 17 million shares. What we do know is you're pulling back with light volume. It's just testing the bottom of its daily profile out here, 141.35. Doesn't really look like uh, lots of uh, trouble in Facebook land. Apple, let's go see what Apple is uh, doing. Apple turnover out here, just trading sideways. No real message here with regard to Apple, 9.7 million shares today. Uh, someone might say, well, it's testing the swing point. From April 5th, Steve-O, the low of which is 143.81, has 27 million shares. So you would say, well, if it closes below 143.81, then you're 143.88, 144.02, actually, uh, 140, no, one, yeah, you are 143.90. Uh, if you close inside there, even with light volume, it says you can go test the high, 145.46. So are we seeing a lot of problems in Apple? take a bite out of this apple land the answer is no now it's friday it's 1 30 the uh, if we go take a look at the uh, bears the squad douche bears those that were present out here uh, april 5th and hey look i still believe this market's going lower i just don't know when per se and i mean a, a, a good move to the downside just haven't bought into the fact that it was going to be today seeing how that support level held out here. But uh, all those folks that got in on the short side on April 5th, you don't think their sphincter muscle is getting a little tight as we speak right now? Hey, I'm not saying that you need to dump your short position. I'm saying watch the uh, top if that's in the S&P 500, the top of that descending trend line. That's probably where price is headed to. And you break above that Hey, all bets are off. You can go back to that March 3rd swing point out here. And if you go take a look at the SPY just as the example out here inside of the SPY, that March uh, 1st swing point 
has got 149 million shares. You do know that is a swing point with volume up at the highs that, in essence, hasn't really been tested. One might say, well, Steve-O, hey, it was tested with 96 million shares on March 15th. I'd say, hey, guess what? You're right. And then Tesla was 78 million shares again on March 16th. But it was only the bottom of that swing that was tested. The top of it was not. So it's hanging out there uh, like a potential sore thumb. Just be careful. Now, what would be reasons to go ahead and stay in on the uh, short side of the uh, trade out here? Well, you can go take a look at the volatility index, which you and I will do. It's trading at 1285. 50 day exponential moving average is 1204. So that certainly isn't the signal that says, hey, all is good in Camelot. Uh, so that would be a reason to uh, go ahead and consider hanging on to that uh, short uh, position. Just don't get married to it. If we take a look at the Dow, that's the chart that's second from the right out here. You'll see it's uh, it's advanced decline oscillator is below is above zero. It's a reading is 0.12. What does that say? It says it wants to go ahead and tap and hit and move up to the top of that descending trend line. So, uh, you know, it's uh, 136. And for those of you that are short time, shorter uh, investors, and you got uh, short a couple of days ago, I'm thinking that sphincter muscles probably going to get really tight out there. And many people are just simply going to fold their hands, and that'll just continue to make these markets move higher out here. New York Stock Exchange, that's a chart on the left-hand side. Uh, that advanced decline oscillator has been above zero for a couple of days now. It's not giving it up. That says price should go ahead and hit the uh, top of the descending trend line out here. And the NASDAQ composite, slightly negative out here, trying to get above uh, zero. I think the New York Stock Exchange, the Dow, the S&P 500, they can go ahead and pull up the NASDAQ composite. So just be careful out there in the trading land. Now, let's go take a look at some things that are actually moving to the upside. How about that granite construction? That's up $4.02. GVA is a ticker symbol. 760,000 shares. I don't know what's behind that move, but let's go take a look at it. It's busting right through the granite tables. Oh, what this thing did was just simply came back to a breakout. This thing broke out back on November 9th with about 2 million shares. And price came back into the breakout area with light volume, 300,000 shares and so forth. Are they building the wall? Thank you, Mr. Z. So uh, Granite Construction Company, maybe wall builders out here. I can tell you what it's doing today. It's moving higher with some pretty decent volume behind that move, 761,000 shares. May not sound like a lot of volume, but the last time it was moving higher was only 615,000 shares. Granite Construction, headed to the 55.76 level. Right now you're trading at 53. 50. Also moving higher, you got Vulcan materials. Those must be wall builders as well. I suppose you order an airstrike and people might say, hey, this guy might actually build a wall. That's gapped up today. You've got 1.5 million shares taken on a swing point that has 2.6 Vulcan materials that may have a real breakout on its hands. Are China A shares hot or not? If you trade China A shares, now may be time to take a closer look. Trade CHAU or CHAD, Directions Daily CSI 300 China A share bull and bear ETFs. China A shares in either direction. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. 
TFNN is excited to offer a brand new piece of market scanning software unlike anything the industry has ever seen. John Logan and his team have spent years developing their market profile tools to finally be able to release the TAS Profile Scanner Plus. And right now, you can get a two-week trial absolutely free just by visiting TFNN.com and providing us your name and email address. The TAS Profile Scanner Plus is the premier market profile-based scanner in the industry. Powered by the acclaimed TAS proprietary algorithms, this feature-rich scanner is a standalone desktop software that instantly filters over 2,500 global financial markets such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Within three minutes of signing up, you can have the software downloaded and running on your computer with a complete roadmap of market indicators and inflection points to trade off using the TAS Profile Scanner Plus. Sign up today and try this amazing piece of software by visiting tfnn.com. Tom O'Brien's weekly gold letter, The Gold Report, gives complete and concise coverage of the entire gold market. Inside, you'll get Tom's commentary on gold, the dollar, the rand, the bond, the XAU, the HUI, and detailed coverage of nearly 25 mining stocks. He'll give you the entry price, price target, and stock price of each stock trade. The Gold Report is a long-term newsletter where the focus is on building real wealth through the management of a successful portfolio of gold stocks. With a lifetime of knowledge and almost 12 years of writing his informative weekly newsletter, The Gold Report, Tom O'Brien can provide you with the important market information to help you make better trades in the gold market. Don't let the next bull run in gold pass you by. To get a month-long free trial to The Gold Report, an $85 value, visit the front page of TFNN.com today. This segment is brought to you by TFNN. Test drive all the newsletters for free at TFNN.com. Welcome back, uh, folks. Uh, I have a request from John to go take a look at the U.S. dollar index. We're taking a look at the June contract. That's what's up on our screen right now. And for all intents and purposes, we got to figure out where that one came from. Uh, you would say that the U.S. dollar index is uh, breaking out, breaking out above its uh, daily market profile, uh, breaking above the center of its weekly profile. And that would suggest a move to 101.83 <coughs> is in order. Right back to the previous swing points out here from March 2nd, March 3rd, and so forth. So that's good. that's one call, and I can see that happening. Uh, today is going to uh, mark, however, a uh, TD9 a setup brought to you by Tom DeMarc out here. And oftentimes, but not always, oftentimes uh, those can be uh, areas where the uh, market, whatever it is you're following, might reverse. You say, yeah, prove that to me, Steve-O. And so here, we'll go ahead and I'll pull up the continuous contract, and that way you'll be able to actually see it visibly with your own eyes out here. And you take a look at the last time that the U.S. dollar index made a, a decent high out here. It was back on the trading day of around December the 20th. So we're going back in time out here, a couple of months, and you'll see that number nine out there. You'll see that number nine, that Gordy Howe, TD setup number nine. Now, in that case there, you can see that that bar number nine was trading into bar number six out here. Usually another indication of a stalling point when you see the bar trading into bars number five or six out here. And in fact, uh, look, that uh, didn't mark the exact high out there, but it certainly marked the stalling point. And then we went ahead and saw the U.S. dollar index go ahead and move lower. Uh, we said that saw two nine counts out here. They didn't form the bottom to the day. They were close, but they were no cigar back on January 24th. And then again out here on March the 22nd. Now, March the 22nd, uh, what we can see here is it was not trading into bars uh, five or six out there. And so went ahead and moved lower for a couple of days. But uh, this bar right now is certainly traded into bar number six. So I'm not going to. It's not that it can't move higher into the top of that uh, profile level. But, um, you know, if you're in the UUP, which uh, John indicated that you are, just make sure you have your stops in place. Uh, make sure you don't let this close below 100.27 to indicate where you were 
at in that uh, trade out here. Uh, but uh, you could begin to see some stalling type action. And that is inside the U.S. dollar index out there. Thanks for sending the email. Let's go take a look at, uh, we were just taking a look at uh, things that were moving to the upside. I say, let's go check into Low Main out here in honor of President G out here. It's actually not Low Main, but it sure looks like Low Main when you spell it the L-O-G-M-E-I-N. But that's really log me in. L-O-G-M is the ticker symbol. Is that a coincidence? Uh, there are no coincidences out here. So you got log me in or low main, depending on which way you want to go ahead and pronounce it, where you want to put the emphasis. You've got it moving higher today with 483,000 shares. Uh, but that's running right into 2.6 million share aroonies out here. And that's from March the 1st. So this thing is going to peter out. Uh, it's kind of uh, made its move. Uh, maybe it pulls back. Back, log me in and test the top of its daily bucks out here in the 9660 level just not enough to go ahead and take out that uh, that that bat of sellers out there that vat of sellers and even hey look at february 14th has got 2.6 million uh, sellers out there as well so that's a, a huge supply line you get over it though then old resistance should become new support ticker symbol there again l o g m what else do we want to look at? Let's look at um, uh, percentage-wise what is moving. Looks like Jose Cuervo. I like this. You mean, hey, we have not looked at Jose Cuervo before. Q-R-V-O. That is uh, Cuervo Inc. Let's go see what this thing is uh, doing. This looks pretty good. I'm thinking uh, break out the limes and salt, right? Let's uh, put this into compact mode, although it's really not compact out here. Uh, today, moving up with 1.8 million shares, moving beyond a couple of swing points at 1.7, 1.5. So it is a real breakout. Now the question is, where is this headed to? So let's go put in a, a weekly chart, see if we can figure this out. Uh, ticker symbol here again, QRVO. And, uh, well, on a weekly basis, it's wall of worry. Takes you back to July 2015. 20 million shares out there. So it looks like uh, Cuervo uh, maybe is running right into a potential supply line. But you close above that supply line, that price being... 71.45, and you are right now at 71.36. It's close. It's no cigar, but it's close. And then this thing could go ahead and move all the way back to its highs from 2015 in June in the uh, 88 to uh, 79 type area. QRVO. That was the weekly chart that you and I were taking a look at. Uh, we've got uh, Tesla. Let's go take a look at uh, Tesla. T S L A. And uh, let's take a look and see what uh, this little guy is. In fact, we're on the weekly chart. Uh, so this thing is at all-time highs out here. And let's go see, has it taken out that consolidation with volume? The top of the first time that uh, price was up here was back in September 2014. There were 36 million shares. Was that, was that the right? Yeah, 36. 36. Did you count 36 million shares? Today, right now, as of 148, and there's going to be more piling on out here, 41 million shares. Now, it was up at these levels again back in July 2015. Oh, with only 19 million shares out here. Very interesting. For those of you Tesla haters out here, you're going to hate to see this. Why is that? Well, because you've got a consolidation and we call here's the well here's the real consolidation right uh, there was price kind of got out of that consolidation back in february 2016 but immediately got back inside so that actually says for those of you tesla haters that would be jim chanos jim chanos sphincter muscle maybe and he might be in it for the long haul but he's gonna be hauling it all the way up to the uh, price level of right around the 397. We'll just round it off and call it the $400 mark. Right now, on a weekly basis, you have Tesla breaking above its consolidation with conviction. How do you like them apples out there? Let's take a look at uh, what else do we have moving? Constellation Brands. I don't know why that's uh, Arch Cole. Let's do that in honor of Arch Crawford. I know he was on Larry's show. I didn't get a chance to hear it. I had intended to, but just simply didn't get a chance. But if we take a look at Arch Cole on a weekly chart out here, that doesn't show us diddly. So let's go change that to a, a daily chart and see what the uh, Cole Meister is doing out here. So it's above weekly profiles. Let's run right into this little candle 
out here from February 21st. That was a bearish reversal signal. Then at volume of 803,000, you're up there with 425. So it looks like Arch Coal is getting ready to kind of put the brakes on uh, on its move. Doesn't mean that it's bearish, just means that it's running into a bit of a wall of worry out there. A-R-C-H is the uh, ticker symbol. If we go take a look at some things moving to the downside, you've got uh, Biogen, the B-double-I-B out there. Of course, you want to have on a bib if you're eating uh, lobster. That would be a good thing out here. And if you're not eating lobster, well, then any napkin will do. If we take a look at uh, Biogen, today moving lower with about 990,000 shares. Last time it was down here was 1.4 million shares. And of course, you had that trading day, that odd trading day from February 24th with 1.7 million shares. So uh, does it mean that Biogen can't move lower? No, it doesn't. If it closes above the 269.21 level, yeah, then it says probably is going to bounce up to 275.13. This is Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right back. If you're looking to unearth a new financial resource and diversify your financial portfolio, consider the new market-safe core commodity CD from EverBank. This five-year U.S. dollar-denominated CD gives you exposure to four equally weighted commodities, gold, copper, WTI oil, and sugar, in one powerful CD. With no pricing caps, you can potentially earn an unlimited upside payment at maturity if the commodities increase in value across semi-annual pricing dates. And should the opposite occur, your principal is 100% protected. Keep in mind, returns are based on CD performance. There's no annual percent yield or periodic rate of interest on this index CD. Don't miss out. With certain commodities on the rebound, now is the time to take advantage. The March 23rd funding deadline will be here before you know it. So call 1-855-750-4051 or visit everbank.com slash TFNN for the CD's term sheet and other important product details and disclosures. Once more, that's 1-855-750-4051 or visit everbank.com slash TFNN. This advertisement is sponsored content. Everbank is a member FDIC. If you're an active trader looking for that extra edge when it comes to trading and investments, then now is a great time to get a two-week free trial to Tom O'Brien's daily market letter, Market Insights. Tom O'Brien's daily newsletter, Market Insights, comes out every market day at around 9.30 a.m. and provides Tom's daily commentary on the broad market, including the Dow, NASDAQ, and S&P, plus specific trade recommendations. There's even an update published most afternoons to keep you informed about the day's market activity. He'll give you the entry price, price target, and stop price of each stock and option trade. With Market Insights, there's nothing left to guessing. For all the details and to get your two-week free trial to Market Insights started today, visit TFNN.com. TFNN has put together the finest live programming lineup each trading day, featuring some of the most knowledgeable and respected financial minds in the nation to educate traders and investors. On Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays, we broadcast nine hours a day starting at 8 a.m. as John Logan kicks us off each trading day with the Global Market Pulse. Tuesdays and Thursdays, we broadcast 11 hours. Get an early and healthy start to your day as Nico and Paige bring you Living a Primal Lifestyle. Then catch Andy Hecht at 5 p.m. with the Commodities Hour. Following the Tom O'Brien Show, Mondays and Fridays, catch live trading on the Nadex platform with host Tom and Tommy O'Brien, along with Daryl Martin on the Bull Bear Binary Option Hour. See the TFNN program lineup via the link on the front page of TFNN.com to get a complete overview of our TFNN shows and hosts. And keep TFNN's Tiger TV tuned in on your mobile device, PC, or Mac for the latest financial news and information throughout the broadcasting day. TFNN, educating investors. Join David Dwight as he keeps you up to date on the latest tech stocks while he uses his Power Law Vector Indicator to identify the best trades. The Power Trading Hour, next on TFNN. Welcome back, uh, folks. John in Sarasota. Hey, John, thanks for sending an email. Nice to uh, hear from you. He writes and says, hi, is there anything with this stock? Ticker symbol here, folks, is IML. 
IFF. That stands for InMed Pharmaceuticals, Inc. If we take a look at what these guys do, InMed Pharmaceuticals, a preclinical stage biopharmaceutical company engaged in the research and development of novel and cannabinoid-based therapies in Canada. And, John, sounds to me like you've got a bunch of guys. So, well, let me tell you why. Let me, well, let's go and see what they're doing. Are they generating any income? Right, that would be one question out here, and the answer is uh, absolutely, positively not. Not as of June 30, 2016. So it sounds to me like a bunch of guys that are sitting around smoking a few doobies, if you know what I mean, out here. So there must be something to it. But hey, the reason that he's asking out here is because take a look at this thing. This thing has uh, been moving to the moon out here. I don't know if it's worth an investment in it or not, but he, what John is looking at is a couple of big breakouts out here, kind of those Eiffel Tower breakouts here. You've got one. And what did they discover? Growing pot? I don't think so. But hey, look, I'm sure they truly are looking for different uses for this. Um, you know, which is which is hey, which is great. Who wouldn't want to join that company? Um, you know, I've got an achy back in my arm, and you talk about my uh, rotator cuff problems out there. But if we take a look at uh, January 17th, that had big volume, 3.9 million shares to the upside, and then just a couple of days ago, this thing broke out with another 4.2 million shares. But I don't know if there's any anything in it. Here's the beauty, John, because maybe you've been following the stock or looking at it. It's only trading at 59 cents. So if you're really interested in something like this, you just buy one of those unexpired options. You just take 1% if that's the risk you want to take of your working capital. You know, on 100 grand, you're looking at $1,000. You take that $1,000, you divide it by 59 cents. That's how many shares you buy. You stick it in a drawer and, uh, you know, you hope that it doesn't uh, turn in, uh, go to pot so to speak, out there. So that is pretty much the only way that, you know, there's not real good technical analysis that I think you can do with a, a penny stock. Other than the technical analysis is when you want to trade things like this, just go with the unexpired option process out here. If this thing is going to pull back, you're asking, where is it going to pull back to? You know, maybe into the 43 cent area. I don't know. Volume is coming back a little bit here today, but very difficult to to really do any kind of technical analysis on this stock. And let's face it, they're not generating a single dollar. At least they didn't as of June 13th out there. But uh, they're having a good time in that uh, stock. Uh, I think that's all the emails out here. So, uh, yeah, we're going to end the uh, week with uh, maybe a slightly, slightly up market in the uh, Dow out here. Um, this market has got, I can tell you that there are topping signals in virtually every single indice that is out there. There's not a topping signal in the S&P. There's not a topping signal inside of the Dow, but there is a topping signal in every single other indice that is out there. But that doesn't mean that a top is in. These things can fail. Many of these have been in for quite some period of time out here. So um, sometimes, uh, so long term, though, long term. Let's make sure that we mention this. We talked about this yesterday a bit. Long term, if we go put the uh, uh, the Dow up as just an well, here's the S and P 500. Long term, intermediate term, is there any thing that says you should dump your money out and uh, you know don't run for no? Are you kidding me? No. The market, the S and P 500, it's headed higher over time. And if there is a nice 10% pullback, which there will be at some point in time, you want to load up the truck and add more to the long positions. Folks, stay tuned. Your friend and mine, David White, our favorite polar bear, he's up next. Tom O'Brien from 3 to 5. Have a great weekend. We'll see you on Magnificent Monday. Take care, folks. Larry Pesavento has just started his brand new service, Fibonacci 24-7, and he's already delivering content to his subscribers on a daily basis when the market's opened and even on weekends. Each Monday, you'll receive Larry's written report that provides detailed commentary and a summary on the charts and videos that Larry sends out. And throughout the week, when warranted, Larry will send out via charts or videos or both the key markets that he is watching during the day. This will be up-to-the-date active trading information that will 
will help you in your daily trading. In Larry's first week alone, he sent out 25 charts, six videos, and a full report to his subscribers in just one week. If you're a technical trader that uses patterns and retracements to trade, then Larry's service Fibonacci 24-7 is something that you must try. Right now, new subscribers can get a full 30-day money-back guarantee. With nothing to risk, sign up now to Larry Pesavento's Fibonacci 24-7 by visiting the front page of TFNN.com under Trading Newsletters. You're watching Tiger TV.